Hey guys, Melissa here. Do you have random gemstone rough or tumbled stones laying around that you don't know what to do with, but you'd really like to make jewelry out of it? In this video, I'll show you how to wrap your stone in wire to make a pendant with your stone that you probably didn't think you could do. This one happens to be double-sided. You can wear it this way, or you can wear it this way. Basically, two pendants in one. So if you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. I have this nice chunk of amethyst crystal here, and it's pretty jagged. It's not polished. It's just a nice chunk, and I don't know which way I want facing out. So I'm going to show you how I make a freeform wrap for this kind of stone. You can make it reversible even to show off the whole stone if you want to. My wire choices always depend on the stone. I kind of let the stone do the talking. Amethyst always looks good with silver, so that's what I chose today. And with it being nice and big and chunky, I'm gonna go with an 18 gauge, an 18 gauge square. I always pick dead soft and half round wire. I also picked 18 gauge. That should be nice and thick and secure enough to hold my wire. For these wraps, I only use three wires. The size of your stone determines the length. So this probably is about three inches around. So yeah, three. I usually multiply that by three. So we'll go nine inches. That should give me plenty of wire at the end to make a bale and to make some embellishments if I want to. Let me get those lengths cut. And also when you're using square wire, you can decide if you want to twist the wire or not, or one of the wires or two of the wires. I think with this piece, I want to twist the outer wires and leave the middle wire smooth. I just want to get my lengths of wire as straight as possible. So they lay together really nice. That's the nice thing about square wire is you can kind of lock them together. Bind them together is usually what I say. Binding wires this is the half round wires I use. I do a lot of my shaping with my fingers to get them to lay next to each other. Last shifting back and forth, this way, this way. Sometimes they bounce around on you. That's okay. For now, I am going to twist them. To do that, I'm going to use this little gadget here. A little clamp that'll hold one end of your wire. Stick one end in there. Clamp it down. Grab the other end with my flat nose pliers and just start twisting. This is called a pin vise. I have a... Uh, all my tools and materials down in the description. I have an Amazon link down there as well. Go check that out. That'll lead you to my Amazon storefront and it just lists all the items that I get from Amazon there. Of course, I get a little cut if you happen to buy something, but it's no extra cost to you. If you don't have a pin vise, you can do this with just a pair of pliers. So I am twisting clockwise and I twist until I like what I see until my twist is as tight as I want it. If I do a second wire, I tend to twist it the opposite way. So I'm gonna go counterclockwise this time until I get the same amount of twist that I do on the first wire. Now it looks to be about the same. Give them a little extra twist just because. Okay, so now I'm going to line them up with my twisted wires on the outside. Get them nice and straight and next to each other. I'm going to tape them up. Smush that down. I started on the one end where I taped already and I went up to make sure that everybody is straight and not twisted and then I taped this side. You don't want that middle square wire to twist on you. These are kind of long so I think I'm going to tape the middle as well. I just kind of go from the end, make sure everybody's straight and smooth. Tape it. 
Next step, you're going to tape your stone. The stone was three inches round, so it'll grab approximately a three inch piece of tape. Kind of determine what you want to be front, back, side to side, and up and down. So I want this foggy area to be down. Wrap my tape around, and now I'm going to determine where I want some bindings. I'm going to grab a Sharpie here, and my bindings, I use my half round wire, and I usually do about two. So I'm going to put one here. No, actually scratch that. I want to put one here on either side, and then up here because you're going to have bindings here, and then I'm going to flare the wire out. And I think I'll put some bindings here, and then it'll come up and we'll make our bail. That's our center. It's going to look a little weird. This mark was pretty much center, and I marked my center on my uh, wires here. And now I'm going to mark my wires where I need to put the bindings. Okay. I have a scrap of 18 gauge half round wire in there already, so I'm going to use this. To wrap my bindings, I use my flat nose pliers. And I usually start off making a hook with a little angle on it, angle to the side, just like that. Put my hook facing out from one side of my mark here. Grab it with my flat nose and kind of push it over the other side like that. Make sure everything's lined up still. Push that over the one side, do the same thing, push that over the edge. Pinch it and push it. Okay, and this is where you snip it. Snip it so it goes about halfway across. Make sure your ends are on the same side. And smoosh that down. That guy's still flaring out, so you want to bring that back in. And that's what your bindings look like from the other side. I got my first bindings on, so I don't need this tape anymore. It's kind of in the way. We're going to make a binding right there. I didn't show you before. My half round has a flat side and a dome side, rounded side. Flat side always goes towards the wires, so I'm going to grab it, bring it around my flat nose, angled out like I did the last time. Make sure your ugly side is the same. Grab it with my flat nose and push it over the side. Smoosh it and push it over the side again. Smoosh it, push it over the side, and then cut it. And then smoosh it again. I should have plenty in this little guy. Make sure your mark is where you want it. Push that down. If your bindings are cockeyed, you can grab opposite corners and kind of give it a squeeze and that'll straighten it out. We have one more binding left.
Okay, smush that down. This little hook I could have made longer. So all your bindings are on according to where you mark. Now you can start shaping your wires around your stone. Use your pliers to assist you if needed. And use your leftover tape to help you keep things in line. Got your stone where you want it. Just need to pinch them in and then angle your wires upward so you can wrap your bale. Just find the point on the stone where you want the bale to start. There we go. I'm gonna put another little hook in my half round wire. Hook one side of my bale and start wrapping around. Start pinching and smooshing as you go. Take my clamp off. Flare these out a little bit. I think I'll take my tape off at this time and we'll secure our stone. And the way we do that is we start to pull out these wires here. This 18 gauge wire is a little tough. You might need a little wedge to stick in there. If you got a little knife, you gotta be careful though. I've got this little guy. It's from a carving set, I think. Go in there and give them a twist. I forgot to mention, you don't want to put too much of a bend in your top wires because you're going to need to pull them through a little bit. When you flare them out, it's going to pull from the top. Take your flat nose and twist. Once you get the wires separated, you can give them a twist with your flat nose. At the same time, try not to scratch your stone. Eighteen gauge wire is a little bit harder to work with too, so it's too hard for your hands, which for me this is a little borderline too rough. Then you can go with like a twenty gauge if you would rather. Grab these two, cross each other, and kind of bring them in closer. And just go through and. Push and pull as needed so you can get your stone locked in. I use my round nose pliers a lot too. And kind of roll the wire. This is pretty secure. All that manipulating kind of made our wires up top a little wonky. So we gotta straighten those out now. Bring the two twisted wires out on this side and on this side. I'm going to make my two middle wires the bale. Try to get them next to each other. Take what's left of my binding wire and kind of bind them together a little bit. I 
which way do I want to be the actual front? Since this is flat, I'll make this the front. I'll bring my wires forward and I'll bend them to the back. Got a little bit of binding wire left, so I'm going to bring it around everybody a couple times, and then maybe through the back. A couple times. If you want to cover your whole bale in half round, you can do that as well. You just need to cut yourself a lot more half round. From here on out, it's all up to you, all up to your imagination. I think these, I'm just going to curl up. Curl up around these guys, these twisted ones. Here, I'm just playing. I think I'm going to wrap this guy all the way down just so there's another wrap around this thicker spot here. And that's the thing with these freeform stones. Everyone is different, obviously. Whatever you do is all up to you. Push this one down. Back a little bit. There we go. I think I'll cut this one here. Smush that end a bit and coil it evenly. Adjust it so it's pleasing to the eye. Twist to that guy. Kind of looks like a heart. All right, still thinking about this side. I wonder if I can hammer these. I put this on the edge of the table so I can fit it.
Just trying something different. Just thinking some hammered swirls would look nice with this bare wire. Just flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm gonna bring these hooks in a little bit, a little bit on the sharp side. I don't want them poking out too much. That's good, I can't feel them. That's why I like to start off with dead soft because once you twist it like I did, it hardens it right up and it becomes really difficult to work with. So I think I'm gonna snip it and tuck it. I think it will be a little too much. I don't want too much going on on this side. I buffed out some of my nicks and scratches. So I'm gonna see what this looks like oxidized. So give me a minute and I'll be back to show you the results. I really like it oxidized. I really like how it turned out. I think it really brings out the purple in the amethyst. Sometimes it was hard to tell whether the stone was amethyst or rose quartz, but I think the silver brings out the purple. So what do you think of this freeform wrap? This wrap is really versatile to wrap any unpolished or polished tumbled stones, any random stones you don't know what to do with, but you would like to make jewelry out of it. This is perfect for that. So let me know in the comments what you think of this wrap. Also, my question of the week. Are you a rock collector? Do you have little jars of rocks just hanging around, just waiting to be wrapped? I'd like to know. Now you know how to wrap them if you want to. So as always, if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great week. Go create something, and I'll see you in the next one.